All right, so we're going to move forward to our second mistake, which is while selecting your INCO terms. So INCO terms are often mentioned as terms of sale, and it's a global recognized guideline to help sellers and buyers to agree on responsibilities of the sale. INCO terms, they were designed to facilitate communication between seller and buyer, so it's not a law. Therefore, there's no regulations that enforce the use or obligations of the INCO terms. Uh, so INCO terms are used to determine either who's paying for the transportation and who's liable during the transportation. So the common mistake I see is that when choosing an INCO term, the seller and the buyer, they only think about who's paying for the cost and that they forget about the liability. And that can get really tricky in damaging situations. Sometimes the seller and the buyer forgets to agree upon like who's gonna be taking care of the insurance. They forget the liability part and that creates a problem. So here's our 2020 uh, Incoterm chart. Incoterms are updated every 10 years and the newest version was just released last September and will take effect in January 1st, 2020. Uh, since Mr. Bo will be putting an Incoterm 2020 webinar that discusses the difference between the Incoterms 2010 and 2020, I will be not discussing the, the, the changes on this webinar. So as of the focus is the type of Incoterms terms to choose at this time. Um, Scarborough also offers customized Incoterm term training. So please feel free to email us if you're interested and uh, we'll be sending you the link to sign up. Um, starting with the E and F terms. Patrick, did you wanna say something? I just wanted to kind of hit on, you know, the, uh, you know, the term that we typically recommend to, a, you know, an exporter, you know, is the, you know, those, what's in red, those C terms. And the reason being, while you do have, you know, some liability when it's on the water and such, but you're in control then. You're choosing the provider, you're driving everything, you're setting up, you know, what milestones that you need to know about and what, you know, when you want to notify your clients uh, of certain things. And it shows your client that, you know, you know how to, you know, you know what you're doing. Now you have people in place to get the cargo to where they, wherever they need it or to whatever port they want it to go to. And it also, at the end of the day, can be an area for, for a small profitability for the exporter because you are providing an additional service now. You're not just selling a product, but you're selling freight. So you can uh, you know, possibly add a, a small percentage onto the freight charges that you're passing along. Now, Patrick, would you ever recommend to export on D terms or DDP terms? I would not recommend a DDP term just because that uh, you are, you know, now getting involved in, you know, duties and taxes and GST and VAT the overseas that you kind of, you know, it's left really left best for, you know, the importer that side. They know the, the rules and regulations and customs formalities over in the country that they're residing in. Uh, you know, DAP is, is fine. It's, uh, again, you're taking on a little more risk because you're, you have to get it delivered. So for whatever, you know, whatever reason, maybe there's a trucker strike somewhere and you can't get it delivered timely, then like, who's paying for those you know, storage costs that may you know, you know, occur? Thank you for that clarification. Just to add a little bit more than Ingo terms, um, just the best practice that I see in a daily, just making sure you and whoever is the buyer is on the same page with the interpretation of the Ingo terms. Um, I see in my daily tasks that sometimes they'll agree upon a INCO term, but they're not on the same page what the INCO term means. So make sure you spell out, like we're gonna ship the CPT, so it's door to port, airport, not include insurance. Just make sure you guys are on the same page and have it as in written for your records. And we see a lot of, um, you know, X works terms uh, here at Scarborough. I think it's a, uh, it's pretty common, you know, that the, the U S exporter really just wants to say, Hey, it's ready. Come and pick it up, which is fine. Um, but this, that doesn't mean that you're not liable for export regulations. You still are the U S principal party of interest because you're getting the financial benefit of the, the merchandise or the exportation. So, you know, that just, you know, be reminded that if you sell on an X works term, you still got to be careful as to uh, you know, what you're exporting and you know, who you're exporting to and such.